Uh, Mark, go ahead, sir. You're untouched and rich. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. hey what's up, Mark? Hey, I don't know why I'm asking you guys, because I know you guys came from a rock station, and all of a sudden you're experts on sports, but why does everyone... Oh, really? Go after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were driving around on hold for uh, in, for 10 minutes, but uh, I decided to hang up on you. I guess that's just the old rock radio training. Go go ask all the experts, the guys that are full-fledged have doctorates in throwing baseballs. The big experts, the ones whose opinions are so stunning and so out of the loop. Hey, hey, Beckett's uh, not pitching well. Oh, my God. I couldn't have figured that out. Oh, Lester's having a down season. Oh, if only I would have known somehow how to acquire that information. <laughs> Big experts. Oh, Brian Waters hasn't thrown up, shown up to camp. Perhaps he doesn't want to be there. I don't know. If only an expert was here to, to analyze that. Oh, boy. If only I had some sort of uh, computer device that could take information from around the globe and give it to me at the press of a button. Or uh, 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 there was somehow a press that could generate a paper that was delivered to my office every morning in order to get that. Or if these games that everyone's talking about uh, somehow could be broadcast on my television. Oh, then I would really feel comfortable doing this. Jagass. <laughs> I guess. So I just said the manager's Johnny Hanukkah. He invented the menorah. <laughs> Bobby hey, hey, everybody. It's Johnny Hanukkah. Welcome to my menorah warehouse. <laughs> Along with my ghost friend, <laughs> Justin Pedrillo. <laughs> hey, Johnny Hanukkah. Hey, Johnny Hanukkah. It's another big win for the Red Sox. What are you doing today? Well, we're going out to my... Dreidel in Menorah Warehouse. Johnny Hanukkah. He's got it for everybody. He's got a cool satin jacket. La Hayam. Every day is Hanukkah. Johnny, Johnny Hanukkah's floor of Mayor Warehouse. He snaps his fingers and the door of Temple opens. It's Johnny Hanukkah. Like Fonzie. Right. He's Johnny Hanukkah. He wears the robes, like bangs a piece of wood right next to the door. Bang, and it opens. The Torah opens in front of him. That's fantastic. Johnny Hanukkah. I have all your Hanukkah needs. <laughs> Candles, menorahs, dreidels. Gelt discounted. <laughs> We're getting close to the Passover. Get your gelt. <laughs> Chocolate coins. Everything. Johnny Hanukkah. <laughs> he just, just kicks, kicks it up and a bunch of pot supplies out. There you go. There's sales on these mesh bags to put the gelt in. Is <laughs> Bob Porum is his pitching coach. <laughs> Saturday <laughs> night, so I, 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 I kicked things back on the train around 930, said, how do you do? <laughs> and by the way, nothing easier to find than the Beaconsfield uh, D train stop uh, at night. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know what? Walking out to Down the Beacon, a side road. Oh yep, my know, god! Oh, how about I knew where it was, and how about I see the trains? And there's numerous. Ma they deliberately make that Beaconsfield stop impossible to get yeah. to. If you get off Beacon Street and you go over the bridge, you've gone too far. You got to you know take how many that bridges left. there are. I, this you guy's take a left. First of all, this guy's walking his dog, and I'm like, "Can you help me, man? <laughs> I've gone down like 85 because I can see the trains. I, right. If I climb a fence, I'm in the I, train yep, stop. I know exactly. What I am talking about. You know what's the P it's, I lived in Brookline for those miserable eight months in Washington Square. It's another people in Brookline being miserable. They don't want you. They don't want it to be easy. You got to be like a local yokel to get on yep, that train. You do. And I asked a guy who's like walking his dog. It's 930 at night on a Saturday. And I'm like, sir, can you please help me? And he's like, oh, like, oh, creepy dude looking for the train. I bet that never happens. And, and uh, yeah, he's like, cross the bridge. So I cross the bridge. And I see him like five minutes later. He's like, no, it's the other bridge. Oh, of course it is. One of the 17 foot bridges. People of Brooklyn. They hide that deliberately. <laughs> Say what you will about Newton. Newton's to the train station. You can't miss it. Nice, nice steps that actually lead to it. I'm walking around a muddy baseball field. My pants are destroyed. Oh, I know where you are. Oh, boy. Yeah, the he, D stop. It at, sounds at to me like he, no, it sounds to me like he deliberately sent you in the wrong direction. No, he didn't because I saw him again and he sent me in the right direction, which, I mean, I, I probably walked for a half an hour around it. Yeah. Do you know how frustrating it is to see the trains yeah, and right. know you can't get on them? That's there. the green line personified if it's not B or C. Sure. And by the way, 
Imagine if he was getting, you know, the feed from the Phoenix Subway Fresh Take 500. Ryan McKnight and his son's broken robot, BJ and Nico. <laughs> Dad is mean. Bad program. <laughs> That's a band name waiting to happen. Oh, That's funny. It's a uh, discarded real doll. <laughs> What other embarrassing things can we name you? <laughs> we have with us here, never lived up to expectations, loser. <laughs> we have here, Rotten Tomato Face McGee. Brian McKnight and his son's broken robot, BJ and Nico. We I have here, Blown <laughs> Tire. <laughs> McGillicuddy. <laughs> Jones. <laughs> We have your oopsie, you're a mistake, Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> we have you weren't planned. Uh, we have yeah. We have your we 20, have, quarter twenty five cent protection from the men's room, Jones. We have here. <laughs> We have here Sack of Garbage Jones and his friend Broken Calculator for him. Yeah, I was at a bar so I could keep an eye on both things. They had the audio of the Celtics game, and I'm sitting at the bar, and uh, the, the, the people had no idea that I'm on the radio. They were older people, and they were sitting next to me. Do you ever have it where, like, people try... They're a couple. They're, they're together, and they're trying to engage me in conversation. I'm being polite, but I don't feel like talking to them. And do you ever have it where they're, like, disappointed in you? Yes. Like they, and they're, like, yes. mad. They said something, like, snide to me when they left. When you're trying to play, pay attention to, like, the game. Yeah, I had uh, my iPad. What, are you at Applebee's? You gotta, did you get yourself a, a rude waitress? <laughs> yeah, I was at Applebee's. You must I have wanted, felt like a jerk I, trying to watch the game. I wanted to rock some uh, <laughs> some, uh, some, uh, some pizza dillas? Some, <laughs> some mango wingaroos. <laughs> No, but I'm at I'm at a local establishment. It, the, the, the bar has not, but these two people are next to me. And then, like one of the things the lady said is, I had a Guinness and I ordered another. And the lady said to me, "Wow, are you Irish?" And I said, "I, I you know have some lineage of mine is Irish." And she says, "Yeah, because you really like that Guinness, really." Shut the hell up. I'm at a bar and I ordered a second. Get I don't care if I have five bottles of whiskey in front of me. Shut the hell up. You're critiquing my drinking at a bar? And I, and I swear to God, it was my I, it was my second beer. It's not like I, I was drinking beers. I better stop drinking Coronas because I'm not Mexican. She, no, but it was like she was like, because you sure like those Guinnesses. You shut the hell up. That's a conversation. <laughs> Go to hell. I'm not in, a, in an elementary school recital. <laughs> You know, like, I'm at a bar at, at 9 o'clock. I can have a second Guinness, thank you very much, lady. And then and then that when she left, and then the guy said something like, uh, can you see the score of the Red Sox game? And I said, yes, the athletics are up 5-1. to one. And he goes, oh, boy, you know, something, something. And I'm like, yeah, DeBron threw a lot of pitches in the first four innings. I, I, that's enough conversation. And then the guy's like, huh. And then I went to the bathroom and I came back and they go and the lady goes, do you, "Why do you feel comfortable leaving your iPad and phone out while you go to the bathroom?" So, wow, it's a vote of go, confidence I, I for the go, safety yeah. of this bar. I go because because I go because I trust you <laughs> is what I said. <laughs> and then, because you're paying such attention to how many drinks I'm having, right? And, 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 and the equipment and fine, I'm a, I'm an ass for having an iPad on the table. Whatever, I I'm watching. The, I had to get out of my house and I'm trying to watch this Celtics game and get some information while I'm watching it. I like having access to the rosters and things of that nature. I'm like, who's this Teague fella? And then I'm, I'm fascinated also when I lived in Atlanta, they had all these terrible draft picks, like uh, taking Williams number one. And uh, even though there was kind of by default, I don't know if that was the strongest draft. But but that's not. And then when they left, they said something like, well, great talking to you, buddy. Shut up. Yeah, leave me alone. I just, just want to leave me alone. Right. And, and not even leave me alone. But Sometimes you want to go where nobody knows your name. They didn't yeah. know who I was. It had nothing to do with being on the radio. No, it just leave I could it. have been some worker jabroni like uh, Wallach, and it's still out of that kind of business. <laughs> 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 they had no idea I was a mover, shaker, headline maker. They thought for all intents and purposes I was a 9-to-5 or nickel and dimer. 
But uh, no, but it, I found that very odd and very rude, quite frankly. How oh, old? How old? How old were these people? I would say that they were in their fifties. Okay, and uh, they housed like ninety-five chicken wings. Oh, is that the is that the iPad or is that a Kindle? It's an iPad, but I have the Kindle up, so you're both right. Teehee. huh? Is it an iPad or a Kindle? <laughs> it's an iPad. Is that the new iPad? Yes. Can I can I take a look at it? No. <laughs> I told the guy no. Yeah, I'm working on it. No, I don't want you to. I have my. The, tw- what if you get on my Twitter and you say something racist or something? Then I got to explain that some guy at the bar took my. T- I mean, you can't have sure, my iPad. Fred. Somebody at the bar took your. What are you doing right, at the bar? Exactly. Exactly. No one believes me, and then I'm and then I'm got to deal with the ass from that news station standing in front of the station. <laughs> Imagine that. Can I look at your iPad? Oh, yeah, here you go, stranger. Why don't you just open up the old email while you're at it? Oh, here's my Bank of America application, too. Go take, knock that around. The old American <laughs> Express one, too. Why don't you get access to everything? Let's go to Mike, because I want to go to Mike. <laughs> Mike, go ahead. Man, I understand. I'm with you guys. He's a hypocrite, and, you know, that's a lot of money. But shut up already. Who no, I'm not going to shut up about it, because it's I idiots like you. That, oh, 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 the Celtics won. Shut up. Oh, the Celtics won. Get your oh boy, live in fantasy land with your with your basketball. We'll have plenty of time to talk about the Celtics. Talking to Mike Gorman. I, we, we've, we've talked about Celtics all morning. Oh boy. Oh, who cares? Who cares? Who cares about a blowout win? This is real life, baby. How about taxpayers in Rhode Island? We're on one hundred twelve million dollars. Hey, super fan. You know what? Then Jim Rice, because he was good, should come out and be able to do whatever he wants. I mean, I mean, get off. I mean, what are you? Eight years old? You got a, a showing poster in your room? I mean, come on. You can't get through your thick skull that it's worth uh, 10 minutes of radio time to talk about this guy who who has put himself out there and has uh, been valued enough locally to be considered a, 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 a very valuable stump speaker for politicians running in the area. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think anybody running for Senate right now or any local office is going to want shilling stumping for them now? I mean, get out of your own way. This isn't a random dude. This isn't, uh, you know... Uh, uh, Sean Green talking to the New Jersey legislator later. This is a guy that uh, during the Scott Brown campaign was a, a big, high-profile dude. You think Scott Brown wants him around anymore? This isn't an indictment of Scott Brown, by the way. They turned down his, uh, the government here locally turned down his uh, little proposal to give him all this money. The last. Plus, I had a fatso from Canada next to me, and, uh, <laughs> and he was uh, insisting on uh, spreading his legs apart. Canadian fatso? It's a good band Oh, name. my God. They, they just, uh, the fatso Canadians with a comment about everything that was happening on the field. Oh, oh I'll tell you what. Oh, boy. I, I'll tell you what. They can get back into this. Uh, you know, it's 7-1. There's a runner on first. Uh, two outs. I tell you what. This, now's the time for a rally. Shut the hell up, Canadian. <laughs> What are you talking about with your big fat ass spilling into my seat? <laughs> and you got to keep your legs apart. Close your legs. Say this is, that. This is not pornography. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're really, really cute. I, I love them all. Yep. Who's your favorite player on the uh, Red Sox? Definitely Jacoby. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. she's. I just had to. Oh, here here we go. To hear. <sighs> yep. Oh, boy. Yep. All right, I guess Jacoby's the biggest honk. I'm sorry. Here we go. Who's your favorite player on the uh, Red Sox? Definitely Jacoby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's my favorite. He's so adorable. Mm-hmm. And he's Native American, so I really feel for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so stupid, not just about baseball. Is she, I mean, <laughs> you know, it was horrible how his land was taken away. 300 years ago. <laughs> well, no, the listen, go to any Indian reservation. It's not exactly heaven on earth, but I think Jacoby Ellsbury is doing okay. <laughs> listen, the Native American people still have uh, injustices in this world, and they live in some terrible conditions oh. on the reservations, but I think right. Jacoby Ellsbury <laughs> is not in, in that situation. <laughs> Boy. Oh, <laughs> oh, you are an all-timer. I got to hear that again. <laughs> <laughs>